In this demonstration, I uh, will explain the MaxWhip object. Here you have a production line. You have a number of operations. They are set on processing time 60 seconds and 90% uh, on availability and 600 seconds in mean time to repair. Most of them, in a way. except operation 5. This operation is set to 65 seconds. So, if we run this, um, run an experiment of this simulation model, we can see that we get a throughput of 48.78 and we get a working process of 170 parts. So let's go back. And we can look at the max whip object. If we add this object, in this model, we have one bottleneck operation. It's operation 5. It's the one that has the highest process time. Since all the others have the same disturbance, it's operation 5 that is the bottleneck operation. But we have these large buffers in between. And in this particular system, uh, the buffers are a little bit too big. So, um, if you would like, to, to maintain uh, the throughput per hour, the productivity of the simulation model, whilst uh, reducing the working process. You could just decrease the buffer sizes here, but keep the buffer size before and after operation 5 to quite high values in order to make sure that operation 5 always can produce parts. In that way, you will um, get the most out of your line. But you can also use the MaxWhip object. And I will explain how it works. MaxWhip sets as this setting only. It sets that the maximum number of parts allowed within MaxWhip loop. And a loop is set like this. If you want the whole line, you set from operation 6 to operation 1. So within this area here, one product is allowed at the moment. We'll start an animation to show this. So now only one part may enter the line and um, until the next may enter now. So this one controls, it says stop to this one. This one is blocked since it's yellow. This part waits to enter the line, but when Max Whip says that now it's okay, then it may enter the line. Okay. Then we will go to this setting. So this is not a good setting, actually, because then you can't really uh, have a high productivity of the production line. We set this to 50, for example. So let's go to the simulation animation again. Start animation. And you can see that this MaxWhip object will allow parts to enter this part of the line as long as there are maximum 50 parts in this part of the line. So now it seems like it stops parts from entering this line. No, not yet really. Here. Here you can see. Now there are there are 50 parts in line. You have five here, you have one there, 46, 47, 48, 49. Now it should be able to allow one part to enter. We'll see. So anyway, it controls that maximum 50 parts may enter this part of the system. So, we can look at the uh, results when running an experiment as well. If you remember the settings before, I think it was 48 in throughput per hour. We get a quite high throughput per hour still, but the working process is much lower compared to 170 as we had before. This is a real improvement of the working process. You can use this MaxWhip object in order to make sure that 
the bottleneck operation gets all the parts it needs. So you control, control the working process in this area, for example. Since you know that the bottleneck operation needs its, its buffers, probably, then you can control this area and reduce this area only. Run an experiment again. 47.59, so it's a little bit higher, but at the same time we got a quite low throughput uh, work and process. So you can experiment with having these kind of work and process loops. You may also enter a separate loop like this, a loop within the loop, if you want to control, for example, that this within this area only want to allow one part. And go to animation, and you can see that only one part is allowed in this area. 